wrestling at the chase. Featuring the top names in the world of wrestling. And now, let's go to ringside and your announcer, Larry Madison. Put on your sunglasses because flashy nature boy Ric Flair is one of the headliners on Wrestling at the Chase today. Hello, I'm Larry Matisic. Nobody can surpass Ric Flair when it comes to flamboyance or self-confidence. But Flair can back it up. He'll have to back it up today because his opponent is former world champion Pat O'Connor. O'Connor knows all the tricks and he'll be more than a handful for Ric Flair on Wrestling at the Chase today. Mickey Garagiola introduces the opening bout right after this. The opening bout, a one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing from St. Joseph, Missouri, weighing 253 pounds, Bruce Reed. From Dunlap, Kansas, weighing 257 pounds, Bobby Jagger, referee Eddie Smith. Bobby Jagger opposes Bruce Reed. Good matchup. Two young guys with a lot of spunk, a lot of fire. Bobby Jaggers and Bruce Reed. A circle. Reed a bit the taller of the two. Reed tried to push Jaggers to the ropes. Jaggers sidestepped, and it was Reed who took the trip to the ropes. Go, Bruce, go! Some of the crowd yelling for Bruce Reed, and that seemed to upset Bobby Jaggers. Arm drag by Reed. Jaggers complains that his hair was pulled. Referee Eddie Smith ignores it. Bruce Reed, all sorts of power there. You talk about a package of muscle, boy. That's what Bruce Reed is. And he can move. He can move. Jaggers twisting Reed's arm. Bangs an elbow into the shoulder of Bruce Reed. Clams that forearm up underneath the shoulder of Reed. Reed leaps over and kicks out. Down goes Jaggers. Jaggers would like to find something to complain about. Really can't. Couldn't get to the hair. Not from that position. Reed's a big man, but his arms aren't that long. I'll guarantee you. Side headlock by Jaggers. Spinning off that headlock into a hammerlock. Nicely done. Good counter by Bruce Reed. Jaggers goes to the ropes. Come on if you want a box, says Bruce Reed. Short-tempered Bobby Jaggers. Prepares to come to grips and does come to grips with Reed. Again, twisting that arm over. Reed counters. Oh, he flung Jaggers down to the mat. And then with a leg drop into the arm, it's Bruce Reed with an arm lock on Bobby Jaggers. He really flipped Jaggers there. Shows you the power he has. It was like snapping a towel or snapping a type of cable or something. The way he snapped that arm of Jaggers and put Jaggers down. Look at that physique on Bruce Reed. Bulging muscles. Think all the hours, those lonely, hard, sweaty hours in the gym, pumping the iron, lifting weights to develop that type of physique, that type of power and muscle. Bruce Reed leaning into that shoulder now, twisting the arm a little bit, putting pressure right from the elbow through the shoulder. Jaggers tries to put some force against the head of Reed, pushes Reed back into the corner. Reed will have to release the arm lock. Forearm smash to the jaw. Reed pitched across the ring. No! Reed reverses the whip. Jaggers comes out and goes for a trip. Compliments of Bruce Reed. Arm drag by Reed. Bruce Reed moving smoothly in the early minutes of the match against Bobby Jaggers. Jaggers, though, is a tough customer. He can take some punishment and he can dish it out. Reed drops his knee into the shoulder of Bobby Jaggers. Jaggers tries to put some pressure on the chin of Reed without much success. Reed twisting that arm. Jaggers onto his knees. But as long as Reed's standing and Jaggers is on his knees or down, Reed has that extra balance, that extra leverage to make the hold even more effective. Jaggers knows it. That's why he's trying to get up. Mickey Garagiola is pointing out some of the scars in the forehead of Bobby Jaggers. Well, it's a rough business, and I doubt you could get along, talk to any top-line wrestler who hasn't had stitches put in that forehead or in the face somewhere or some part of the body. Talk about a guy like, say, Dick the Bruiser, who's been around a few years. 
Although Donnie Brooks, he's been in. I'll bet he's had 150 stitches in his head. And a guy like Harley Race, the world champion, probably double that, maybe. In fact, there's so much scar tissue in Harley Race's head. Oh, Reed pitched through the ropes and out of the ring by Bobby Jaggers. Reed trying a flying tackle. Jaggers sidestep, clouded Reed in the back and knocked him right through the ropes and out of the ring. Bruce Reed trying to regain his bearings outside the ring. He has a count of 20. And he's taking his time getting back up there. There's Jaggers to grab him and snap that throat into the top cable. Bobby Jaggers on the attack against Bruce Reed. Banging away with knee drops into the midsection. Reed on the apron. Jaggers stomping on Reed. Kicks him off the apron and down to the floor. Bruce Reed again. Knocked out of the ring by Bobby Jaggers. Remember the count outside the ring on the floor is 20. On the apron it's 10. Eddie Smith making the count. Reed taking a walk around that ring, going to buy a little time, regain his bearings, get his breath back. But there's Jaggers right back on the attack once more, turning Reed around, bending Reed backward, and slamming an elbow into the face, into the nose of Bruce Reed. Five minutes have expired, five minutes left. Five minutes remain, and the opening bout on wrestling at the chase as Jaggers brings Reed into the ring with a flying mare. Knee drop into the chest. It's on the chest, not the throat. The throat would be an automatic disqualification. At two, Reed gets those shoulders up. A kick to the head from Bobby Jaggers. Jaggers has put Reed into trouble. Reverse neck breaker. The reverse neck breaker by Jaggers. This could be it. Count of two on. No, no. Reed powers his way out of it. Jaggers quickly back on top of Reed with a front face lock. But Bobby Jaggers came very, very close right there to knocking off Bruce Reed with the reverse neck breaker. Good thing for the muscle there. That's what got Reed out of that cradle after the reverse neck breaker. Eddie Smith keeping a close eye on the throat of Reed wants to make sure that Bobby Jaggers is not strangling. And as usual with this fine crew here, you get a good close look at the action right on top of it, literally. Get any closer, you can check the bridge work on Bobby Jagger. You can get in there and referee almost. Jaggers pulling back on that head. The reverse neck breaker was very effective for Jaggers. And if he can keep the pressure on the neck of Reed, maybe a second reverse neck breaker could spell doom for Bruce Reed. And it could spell victory for Bobby Jaggers. Jaggers smiling, he's happy. Match is going his way. Another knee drop to the jaw and into the chest. It was not on the throat. The referee indicating as much. Knee drop again off the throat. Jaggers covers Reed. Count of two. And I mean, he came within about two and a half of being pinned right there. Flying mare by Jaggers. Three minutes left. Three minutes. Three minutes remain between Bobby Jaggers and Bruce Reed. Three minutes are less. And the way things are going right now for Bruce Reed, he's going to have to turn it around because he's getting himself into some trouble right here. It all started when Jaggers sidestepped a flying tackle by Reed, clouded Reed in the back and knocked him out of the ring. From that point on, it's been all Bobby Jaggers. Eddie Smith again, keeping a close eye on things. Checking the Response of Reed. Reed, though, still in it. He's groggy. He's got that head pinched together. The chin forced forward into his own chest by Bobby Jaggers. Jaggers is strong. Maybe his physique is a little bit different from that of Bruce Reed, but don't let it kid you. He's a strong man. He's 255 pounds. You don't push somebody like that around, I'll guarantee you. Reed up to his feet, throws an elbow to the stomach of Bobby Jaggers. Flying tackle. Reed's got guts. He goes that flying tackle again. A second one drops Jaggers. Oh, Jaggers was waiting and catches Reed with a knee lift into the abdomen. Bruce Reed caught with a knee lift into the midsection by Bobby Jaggers. And again, Reed is in some trouble. Two flying tackles did the job, but a third one turned out to be one too many because Jaggers was waiting, and he caught Reed with that knee lift in the midsection. Again, Jaggers pinching the face of Reed together. He rolls Reed over, trying to go for a quick pin. Reed gets that shoulder up. Jaggers not too happy about it, but it's going to take a lot more than that to put Bruce Reed down. That much, I can guarantee you. 
Jaggers pounds on the face of Bruce Reed. Reed comes off the rope for a smash of his own. One minute left, one minute. Jaggers again scores the punch to Bruce Reed. Jaggers grabs Reed, whips him into the ropes, catches him coming off, jackknife and cradle by Reed. Count of one, count of two, and Jaggers gets that shoulder up. Jaggers surprised by that jackknife and cradle of Bruce Reed. Jaggers lifts Reed to the air for a body slam by Bobby Jaggers. Jaggers lines Reed up. Flying elbow drop, but Reed rolled away. Reed rolled away, and the flying elbow drop of Bobby Jaggers was foiled. An elbow smashed to the neck by Bruce Reed. Reed with a small package, the front rolling cradle. Count of one, count of two, and Jaggers pops the leg out and gets the shoulders up. Jaggers goes right for the eyes of Reed. Flying mare is stopped by Reed, backslide by Bruce Reed. Count of one. And at two, Jaggers again gets the shoulders up. Three near pins by Bruce Reed in the last minute of the match. There's the bell. The time limit has expired. The match is a draw, but Reed and Jaggers, oh, they had those heads down low and cracked heads together. Jaggers and Reed both flattened after that impact. The match is a draw between Bobby Jaggers and Bruce Reed, and both men will have to clear the cobwebs before they leave, clear the cobwebs before they leave this ring. Here's Mickey Garagiola. With time running out, referee Eddie Smith declares the match a draw. The first main event, a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing from Wellington, New Zealand, weighing 237 pounds, former world's heavyweight champion, Pat O'Connor. From Minneapolis, Minnesota, Weighing 245 pounds, Nature Boy Rick Flair. Referee Charles Veneta. A lot of eyes in the wrestling world are on this one. Pat O'Connor against Nature Boy Rick Flair. Flair removing still another gaudy road from his collection. I'd like to see this. I'd like to see this guy's. Uh, Closets. He must have a dozen closets in his house. He's that many for the robes. I just want to get the clothes that they have these floating drives on. Yeah, we'd like to take what he gives away to Goodwill. You better believe it. Goodwill comes after me. <laughs> Nature Boy Ric Flair against former world champion Pat O'Connor. O'Connor sidesteps Flair, and Flair is pushed to the ropes, and Pat O'Connor does a little strut for the Nature Boy. Well, Mr. O'Connor knows a thing or two about ring psychology, and if Flair thinks he can fluster O'Connor, well, he better give it another thought. O'Connor steps aside. Arm drag by O'Connor. You gotta give Nature Boy Ric Flair credit, boy. Frying pan into the fire. A tough one today in Pat O'Connor. Missouri State Champion Ted DiBiase coming up. Flair could really be on top of the world. Or he'd be knocked right down that ladder several rungs. Pat O'Connor and then Missouri State Champion Ted DiBiase. A best of three falls duel. The Missouri State title on the line, but more than that. More than that. And as valuable as the Missouri title is, there still is something that maybe means just a hair more. And the man who comes out on top when Flair and DiBiase are done may be the next logical contender for the World Heavyweight Championship belonging to Harley Race. Remember that Flair and Race went to a spectacular one-hour draw. They battered each other. And when the final bell sounded, it was Flair who had just scored with a suplex on Race. Each man had earlier taken a fall. Flair with a figure four leg lock. Race with an inside cradle. Flair tosses O'Connor to the rope. Flying tackle levels Flair. Arm drag, and O'Connor looks sharp today. Flair gets that shoulder up. So when Flair and Race met, the match was a one-hour stalemate. When Race and DiBiase met, do you remember that one? A bizarre, controversial duel. Harley Race lost. By disqualification, though, so Race kept the world title and gold belt. But what happened in the third fall of that match will long be remembered in St. Louis wrestling annals. 
The referee, Charles Venator, was accidentally knocked out of the ring when DiBiase hit him with a flying tackle. While Venator was down on the floor, Race intentionally threw DiBiase over the top rope. Venator, who was trying to regain his bearings out on the floor, saw it happen. He was nearly clobber when DiBiase went over that top rope and nearly landed on top of Venator. Flair trying to hip toss O'Connor. O'Connor blocking it nicely. Again, the hip toss blocked by O'Connor. Arm drag by O'Connor. And back to that race and DiBiase affair. While the referee was outside the ring, and after DiBiase had been pitched over the top rope, DiBiase got back into that ring. Race tried a suplex. DiBiase slipped away, scored with a back suplex, and referee Lee Warren, who had run down to ringside to aid Venator, saw that Race's shoulders were down, and Warren counted three on the world champion. It looked to everybody as though Ted DiBiase was the new world champion. But it wasn't to be, because just as Warren counted three, Venator was up on his feet calling for the bell to disqualify Race for throwing DiBiase over the top rope. No question, it was the right call, and Ted DiBiase himself admitted it. But what a bitter disappointment it was for DiBiase. He thought the gold belt was his, but it wasn't to be. Race still has that gold belt. DiBiase nearly took it away. Flair nearly took it away. What more logical matchup could there be than Flair against DiBiase, the best of three falls. Don't forget that Flair, in the only two times he has met DiBiase before, has beaten him. So DiBiase has that extra added pressure. Does Flair have the number of Ted DiBiase? Flying tackle by Pat O'Connor. Flair ducks underneath. Oh, Flair tried a hip toss. O'Connor blocks it. Spins Flair around. Backslide. Nice move by the Farmer World Champion. Count of one. And Flair manages to slide his arm out of the backslide. And Flair steps outside the ring. He's got to think about this a little bit because Pat O'Connor has obviously come loaded for bear. Get the kind of treatment I get in St. Louis. Pull him out here. Huh? Rick Flair complained that his hair was pulled about the treatment he gets here. Okay, Flair's arguing and complaining, but maybe he has a little ulterior motive here. He's been thrown off balance by Pat O'Connor in the first few minutes of this match. He needs to more or less realign himself with what he's doing to think his strategy through and he's bought some time right now by arguing with the referee and with us five minutes of the lap 15 minutes left o'connor and flair lock up flair twists that arm he's a little happier now oh o'connor breaks the grip down goes flair o'connor with the arm bar on flair and flair becoming angry at his inability to keep a hold on farmer world champion pat o'connor o'connor knows what it's all about O'Connor knows everything there is to know about what happens inside that ring. Don't forget, he had the gold belt for two years, for two plus years. He knows about the pressure of the big matches and he'd like one more crack at the World Heavyweight Championship. Don't you think that if Pat O'Connor could knock off Nature Boy or Ric Flair right here, that he would be in line for a crack at Harley Race and the gold belt? O'Connor knows it. He is primed, he is ready. Flying tackle. Oh, Flair! Catches O'Connor with an elbow smash. That one shook Pat O'Connor. Flair grabs O'Connor by the chin, lifting him to the air. A chop to the chest, trying to knock the wind out of Pat O'Connor. A knee lift right into the solar plexus. And then a front face lock by Nature Boy, Ric Flair on Pat O'Connor. That forearm bone right against the jaw of O'Connor, perfectly applied by Nature Boy, Ric Flair. He knows how to hurt people, believe me. The day he has to hurt O'Connor, and he still has Ted DiBiase to contend with, too, if he intends to get back at Harley Race. Flair's not without his supporters. Don't kid yourself about that. There are a lot of people who like Nature Boy Ric Flair who cheer for him. And when Flair and Race were going at it hot and heavy, I think that crowd was about 50-50 as to who they were cheering for. Flair! doing everything he can to jerk that neck, to stretch out the neck of Pat O'Connor. Flair cinching it up tight, hooking the arm, trying to roll O'Connor onto his back, get him onto the shoulders. Flair leaning into it, putting his full 245 pounds against the arms and the neck of O'Connor, trying to get O'Connor down. Referee Charles Venator right on top of it, trying to look in there. O'Connor, though, keeps balance. Even in a hold, Pat keeps those legs spread apart, the knees apart for extra leverage. He lifts himself up. Flair twisting the head. Low suplex by O'Connor. Oh, he bounced him. But Flair takes the jolt and keeps the front face lock on Pat O'Connor.
O'Connor hooks to head of Flair. Maybe he can reverse the hole, come up with a front face lock of his own. Pat has a lot of strength in those forearms and biceps. Do you ever feel that guy's grip? Mickey, did you ever grab him by the arm? You know, he's been talking to him, just grab a guy's arm like you do sometime. Boy, he's like steel cables. Pat O'Connor has tremendous power in his grip. So Flair, better be careful to keep the balance. The only thing I'm interested in is how his grip is on his wallet. That's the only thing I worry about being a waiter. You know what I mean, Larry? You're worried about Pat's grip on his How is his grip on his wallet? Very good. Very, very good. good. He has a yeah, good grip on his wallet. He's trying much his name to all the chicks. Oh, an elbow smash to the head by Flair, and then he hooks O'Connor with that front face lock again. The, the man has really got a grip. There's no, no doubt about it. Well, he's a good tipper, isn't he? Yes, he is. Pat? All wrestlers, though, I think they are the top tippers. And I would think Ric Flair might waiters. be the best. I know he's he goes out somewhere to a fancy restaurant or somewhere to eat. He goes to the finest. Doesn't kid about it. Comes to town, makes sure he has a limousine waiting for him. Remember once he had to go back to Minneapolis, his hometown, for the wedding of a good friend of his. He had to wrestle that night, so he chartered his own jet to go from Charlotte, North Carolina to Minneapolis. Had the jet wait for him at the airport in Minneapolis. Went to the wedding, attended the reception briefly, then flew back to Charlotte, North Carolina for a main event that night and won. That's Ric Flair. He does it with style, my friend. That's what you call a classy guy. Forearm smash by nature boy Ric Flair. He pounds on Pat O'Connor. O'Connor pulled off to the center of the ring and once more the front face lock. Ten minutes have expired, ten minutes left. Flair keeps his shoulders up as O'Connor tried to cradle him but just couldn't get that leg. O'Connor underneath again for that low suplex. O'Connor pulls his head out. The head is free. That low suplex finally did the job. O'Connor spins Flair. Trying to go for that backslide. It nearly worked before. Flair struggling against it. He's finally forced down. Puts the arm right out, though. It was worth a try. It almost worked before. No question about that. Flair with a forearm smash. O'Connor with one. Flair and O'Connor. O'Connor hooks Flair. And both men go tumbling over the top rope and outside the ring. Flair and O'Connor, both outside the ring, a heavy spill over that top rope. Neither man really in control of his body. They both went tumbling over the ropes. An elbow smashed to the head by Flair. O'Connor pulls Flair back down and slams O'Connor into the ring apron. O'Connor trying to get back into the ring after slamming Flair into the apron. O'Connor reaches out for Flair, but it's Flair who grabs O'Connor, and Flair has O'Connor outside the ring and jams his knee into the steel ring post. Ric Flair jamming the knee of Pat O'Connor into the steel ring post. Flair ramming that knee into the post. Oh, Flair spotted an opening, and he's just like a shark going after blood. Flair punishing that leg around the ring post. And Pat O'Connor walked right into trouble there as Flair grabbed O'Connor and slammed that knee twice and then twisted it around the ring post. Flair punishing the leg of Pat O'Connor, spins it around the toe, going for the figure four leg lock. O'Connor breaks it, pulls that forward, try for a pin, but the legs of Flair are free, could not be cradled. Flair going for that leg again, trying to go for the injured leg of Pat O'Connor. O'Connor trying to keep his balance. O'Connor, seeing a wound on Flair's forehead, begins to pound on the head of Flair. And Flair, bleeding from an earlier wound that had been opened in a match, the head of Ric Flair opened up by Pat O'Connor. O'Connor pounding on the bloody head of Nature Boy Ric Flair. O'Connor's knee is hurt. He knew he was in trouble, and he went right for the head of Flair. Flair bleeding the blood, pouring through the blonde hair of Nature Boy Ric Flair. Something else that Ted DiBiase can attack, maybe, but more importantly, it's something that Pat O'Connor, who's still favoring that leg, can attack. Flair, the blood streaming down his head. There's the sleeper! The sleeper by Pat O'Connor on Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Flair bleeding and trapped in the sleeper. Oh, both men go flying over that top rope again as O'Connor and Flair went to the ropes. Flair, the blood pouring off his head. O'Connor, oh, he almost lost his balance when he got up with that bad knee. Flair misses a punch. O'Connor with the sleeper outside the ring. The sleeper outside the ring. O'Connor and Flair. O'Connor with the sleeper. Oh, O'Connor jammed backwards. O'Connor jammed backwards into the steel ring post. The bloody Ric Flair. He's going for the figure four. Flair with a figure four on O'Connor outside the ring. 
The bloody Ric Flair with the figure four on Pat O'Connor outside the ring. The referee counting on both men. He's up to 15, 16, both men being counted on. Flair, the blood streaming down his face. The count's up to 19, Flair's in the ring. O'Connor with the injured knee is outside the ring. And nature boy, Ric Flair, has the victory. O'Connor counted out outside the ring. O'Connor has been injured, slammed backwards into the steel ring post. And then Flair applying the figure four leg lock outside the ring. O'Connor has been hurt. He can't straighten that leg out, and Ric Flair, even bleeding, had what it takes to come up with a victory. Let's hear from Mickey. 13 minutes and 40 seconds. Referee Charles Mahanas counts out. Pat O'Connor, the winner, Nature Boy, Ric Flair. When opportunity knocks, Ric Flair opened the door. In slow motion, let's watch. There's O'Connor with the sleeper hold on Flair outside the ring. O'Connor with the sleeper on Flair, trying to put Ric Flair away. Flair trying to lean in into O'Connor, put his body weight against O'Connor. Suddenly, he shoves O'Connor back and slams O'Connor backwards, the back of his head cracking against that steel ring post. Also, his back taking the jolt. O'Connor, the sleeper hold broken as the two battled outside the ring. O'Connor falling forward. The bloodied Ric Flair realizing now what he has done to Pat O'Connor. Flair sees those legs out, knows that O'Connor's knee has been injured, and outside the ring, outside the ring, Flair goes for the figure four leg lock and pours on the pressure on Pat O'Connor's injured leg. O'Connor had to be carried out of the studio. From there, Flair managed to beat the count back into the ring. O'Connor did not, and nature boy Ric Flair, who's with us now, was the winner. Rick, uh, I guess you take victory in any form it comes. Hey. When all my ladies are lined up all over the world and I walk up to them, or I should say they walk up to me, they don't say, Nature Boy, woo! How did you win the match? They just want to know if I won. In the greatest sport in the whole world, I'm talking about professional wrestling, it's not whether or not whether you win or how you win it's what the outcome is and the outcome is always in my case rick flair on top one way or another but against harley race the match was a draw even though i admit you came close hey, what did you say to me in the hallway five minutes ago one of the greatest matches in the history of keel auditorium right or wrong it was a great match, One tremendous match. One of the greatest match. matches in the history of St. Louis. And for the last five minutes, where was Harley Race? Oh, no, no more, Nature Boy. No more, no more. That's where Harley Race was. Now, you know, I'm very upset that I have to stand out here, the golden mane covered in blood, and the Nature Boy a little messed up. Due to Pat O'Connor, one of Harley Race's stooge. And don't tell me any different, O'Connor. You went after my head. You saw I had stitches there. You went after it. That's okay, because I left you laying right there in the concrete. Now let's talk about St. Louis. Let's talk about Ted DiBiase. Let's DBS. talk about Teddy DiBiase. Let's talk about Ric Flair. There's only one man that can be the number one contender. There's only one man that all the girls can say, Woo, you are some kind of fine. There's only one man that's going to get back in the ring with Harley Race right here, and it's going to be me, not Ted DiBiase. Don't forget, DBS almost took the belt from him, That's though. That's right. Who beat DBS when I wrestled him here last time? You beat him twice. That's right. Twice I wrestled DBS right here, and twice the Nature Boy has won. Now, this time, that skinny little punk has got the Missouri State title. I'm going to beat him for that. I'm going to take the Missouri State title, and then I get Harley Race again. Race, your days are numbered. When Ric Flair says so, brother, it's as good as gold. What comes out of this mouth, no brag, just facts. Put it in the bank. What the Nature Boy wants, woo, the Nature Boy gets. I want DBS, I want the Missouri title, and I want Harley Race, and I want the most coveted trophy in all of pro wrestling, the NWA Heavyweight Championship. They're all going to belong to the Nature Boy in that order. DBS, the Missouri title, Race, and NWA title. Put it in the bank, brother. What comes out of Ric Flair's mouth is as good as gold. Because I don't mind sweating, I don't mind bleeding, I don't mind paying the price. 
As long as I get what I want, and what I want is the biggest goal of them all, Harley Race. Be ready, brother, because the Big Daddy woo, is coming your way. Nature boy, Rick Slayer, he'll pay the price to win. He certainly proved it today against Pat O'Connor. Rick Slayer. We'll be back with more after this. The second main event, an Australian tag team match, one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing from Newark, New Jersey, weighing 239 pounds, J.J. Dillon. From Toronto, Canada, weighing 249 pounds, Mike Kelly. From Boston, Mass, weighing 265 pounds, Ruth Bazaar Jones. From Denton, Texas, weighing 245 pounds, Terry Von Erich. J.J. Dillon and Mike Kelly clash with Rufus R. Jones and Kerry Von Erich. That's a popular duo. It has to be with Kerry Von Erich and Rufus R. Jones on the same side. Kerry begins the action against Mike Kelly. Kelly pushes Kerry into the corner. Kelly steps back cleanly. Kerry very cautious. Kerry twists that arm over on Mike Kelly. Twists it again, Kerry Von Erich, and puts pressure into the wrist. Nice move by Mike Kelly to throw Kerry off balance. And Bizarre Jones yells some encouragement to Kerry Von Erich from outside the ring. Side headlock by Mike Kelly on Kerry Von Erich. Kerry trying to come up with a wrist lock against Mike Kelly. Lots of muscle right there as Kerry goes to the wrist lock, takes Kelly down. Knee drop into the arm by Kerry Von Erich on Mike Kelly. How about that nature boy, Ric Flair? He's not lying when he says he'll pay any price. He'll bleed, he'll sweat, he'll take any bruise, any bump there is. He wants to get to the top. Boy, Pat O'Connor gave him a terrific match, really did. But outside the ring when he had the sleeper hold on and Flair jammed O'Connor backwards into the ring post and Flair put on the figure four leg lock outside the ring. The referee hit 16, Flair released the figure four, got back in at 19, count of two before Kerry shoved Dylan off. Flair was back in at 19, but O'Connor was down on the floor, his knee crippled, and he had to be helped from the ring. I'll tell you, that figure four leg lock can do it. Don't forget that Ted DiBiase is the guy with his figure four leg lock. He put strongman Ken Patera in the hospital for knee surgery with a figure four leg lock. Imagine what happens. If DBS gets that figure four on Flair, or Flair gets it on DBS, can either one reverse it? Can they defend against it? Flair and DBS couldn't be a more important match because the winner is number one for going for the World Heavyweight Championship. Jones knocks Mike Kelly back from the ropes. You bet Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, will be keeping an eye on that match as you watch Rufus try to pull out the beard of Mike Kelly. Dusty Rhodes will be watching that battle between DBS and Flair. And so will Bobby Jaggers, because Jaggers can leave the American dream a nightmare if he knocks off Dusty Rhodes. Want some bruises? How about Big John Studd against Dick the Bruiser? There's a knockdown drag out affair. Kerry Von Erich with the arm lock on Mike Kelly. Hey, and Studd, or Dick the Bruiser would make a fine challenger for either the winner between Flair and DBS or the World Heavyweight Championship. Mike Kelly gets to his feet, pulls Kerry Von Erich into the corner and tags J.J. Dillon. Kelly hanging on to Kerry Von Erich. Dillon pounds in the midsection of Kerry Von Erich. Flying Beal by J.J. Dillon. Tag made to Rufus R. Jones. They have an important match coming up too, Jones and Dillon. And Jones goes right to work on Dillon, dropping him. Tag made to Mike Kelly. Kelly walks right into a jolt. Another blast from Rufus R. Jones. A freight train begins to roll. The second flying tackle. Jones covers Kelly. Dillon there to break it up. Kerry Von Erich's after Dillon. He flattens Dillon. Kelly has a full Nelson on Rufus Jones. He's yelling for Dillon. Dillon comes charging in for drop kick. Oh, and Dillon drop kicked his own partner. A drop kick by Kerry Von Erich knocks Dillon out of the ring. A flying tackle by Rufus R. Jones on Kelly. Headbutt by Rufus. Rufus covers Kelly. Count of one, two, three. Rufus R. Jones and Kerry Von Erich bring this crowd standing and roaring to their feet. 
The drop kick by Dillon backfired, hit his own partner. When Rufus slipped away from Kelly, Jones followed the headbutt on Kelly. Jones and Kerry Von Eric are the winners. Let's make it official. In three minutes and 51 seconds, the headbutt, the winning team of Rufus are Jones and Kerry Von Eric. The final match, most falls to curfew. Introducing from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 234 pounds, Terry Taylor. From Toronto, Canada, weighing 251 pounds, Pat Kelly. Terry Taylor and Pat Kelly clash. It's most falls to curfew between Taylor and Pat Kelly. Kelly with a wrist lock. Takes Taylor down. Taylor, fine counter into Hammerlock, but Kelly dove to the ropes. Clean break from Terry Taylor on Pat Kelly. Come on, Pat, stop that boy. The Kerry Von Eric and Rufus R. Jones combination worked very well together. A lot of action. I tell you, Kerry's a good tag team partner. And of course, he'll be on the spot as he and his brother David take on Von Roschke and Dick Murdoch. Talk about a pressure match there. The Von Erichs have been sailing along smoothly. They're hot. The boys going against Von Roschke and Dick Murdoch. That will be tough. Roschke with his claw hold. Dick Murdoch is unpredictable as a Texas tornado. Murdoch and Roschke against the Von Erich brothers, David and Kerry. Tag team wrestling, cooperation, smoothness, teamwork. It'll all be at a premium in that one. And also in that mixed tag match because Buzz Partlow and Sandy Buzz Tyler and Sandy Partlow, who are husband and wife. Well, they should have the advantage of working together. They can't get along. I don't know. Bulldog Bob Brown and Shirley Black going against the husband and wife duo of Tyler and Partlow. There's a head scissors by Pat Kelly on Terry Taylor. Taylor trying to roll into a position where he can pop that head out. Kelly squeezing the head. Wants to keep that neck down. Look at Taylor's knee. Look at Taylor's knee, right across the ankle. He bounces into the ankles. That hurt, it popped his head free, but Kelly, again with a good move, comes up with a hammer lock on Terry Taylor. Nice move by Pat Kelly. Taylor got out of the head scissors, but then Kelly quickly slid right into the hammer lock. Either one of the Kelly twins, they can wrestle. In addition to being rough, they can wrestle. And of course, that's the key to success. Being rough is not near enough, and Ric Flair, Dick Murdoch, Von Roschke, all of them would be the first to tell you that. It's a head scissors now by Pat Kelly on Terry Taylor. Everybody's expecting a war, maybe a Donnybrook between Flair and DBS, and when all the smoke settles, it'll probably be some simple cradle or something that decides the match, because it'll come down to fundamentals and what you do instinctively and what you do well and what you can do quickly. Taylor over the top of Kelly, but couldn't keep those shoulders down. Taylor moves back in aggressively after the leg. He's kicked away by Pat Kelly. Taylor again drops him, stepping inside with an inside step over toe hold. Nicely done. Usually you see the straight step over toe hold by the other way, but Terry Taylor comes to the inside. Taylor, of course, is the protege of former world champion Jack Briscoe. Briscoe, truly one of the finest scientific grapplers of the modern era. No question about that. He has trained Terry Taylor well. Two minutes left. Two minutes. Two minutes remaining in curfew. Pat Kelly and Terry Taylor. Neither man's been able to come up with a fall yet. Kelly rolls Taylor down. He's trying to put those shoulders down, but Taylor's leg ends up right in the ropes. The referee orders a break. It was worth a try. It was a good takedown by Kelly. Taylor and Kelly looking for an opening, paying careful attention. Kelly turns Taylor, puts him on the ropes. Then he pulls him forward and catches him with a forearm smash alongside the cheekbone. Knee lift. Taylor knocked against the ropes by Pat Kelly. An uppercut with the forearm smash. It was a legal blow with the forearm. Taylor trying to regain his breath. Kelly wants to keep the pressure on. He wants to try and come up with that ball. Time running out. Kelly and Taylor both know it. And it's Kelly with the advantage right now. He strangled Terry Taylor in the ropes. A knee lift into the side by Kelly. One minute left, one minute. One minute remaining. Kelly trying to finish off Terry Taylor for a fall here. Taylor battling back with a forearm smash of his own. 
A second forearm by Pat Kelly. Taylor has to be rattled. He's taking some forearm smashes. Oh, back flip by Pat Kelly. He covers Taylor, count of one, two, and Taylor lifts off Pat Kelly. Kelly came close there to coming up with a victory over Terry Taylor. Taylor tossed to the ropes. Oh, he tries to hip toss. Taylor blocks it, backslide on Pat Kelly. Kelly tried to pull the arm out. Hey, he couldn't do it. Taylor locked those arms in with the backslide. There's the first fall and the only fall that's going to fit into this curfew. So Terry Taylor with good alert wrestling, a backslide. Kelly tried to slide his arm out. Taylor had that arm locked securely. He held it in. The backslide pays off for Terry Taylor. Here's Mickey. With time running out, the winner of the only fall and the match, Terry Taylor. Join us every weekend for wrestling at the Chase. You can't top it for excitement, and I think anybody who saw today's program has to agree. Wrestling at the Chase for the finest in excitement every weekend. We'll see you again next weekend. You've been watching Wrestling at the Chase. This program has been produced by Sam Muchnick in cooperation with the St. Louis Wrestling Club.